Let's ask a not-so-simple question. Who do we blame for this? The actors? Some of them had next to no voice acting credits prior to this, save for a lot of them being credited as extra voices in Shenmue 2. And perhaps unsurprisingly, many of them don't have any voice credits beyond this game. For example, Jenny is voiced by Alison Noonan. She's a singer who also plays cello and piano, and her only voice credit aside from this is for a Japanese rail shooter called The Maze of the Kings, in which her acting is just as bad. Wow! The route changes every time in this labyrinth. For protecting from intruders. Let's go! Actually, Ryoho's voice actor was in this game too, as a giant floating King Tut head. He was also Morpheus in Resident Evil Dead Aim, and I don't mean to alarm you, but his acting was better in that. You will not destroy this for me. Barely. Bakuru's voice actor is Raj Ramaya, who, like Alison Noonan, is primarily a musician, doing composition and lyrical work. His most prominent voice role aside from this is... Bruce McGivern in Resident Evil Dead Aim. A party guest seemed to arrive! Hurry up, Molly! Sadly, I take his performance as Bruce over Bakaru here, who sounds like he's about to doze off from boredom. I think this is the origin of both zoanthrope problems and the earthquakes. I am something. Scourge Wait, what? What? Scourge? How did that make the final cut? Sheena's voice actress is Karen Lee, whom prior to this recorded call center voice messages and narrations for Japanese commercials. She primarily does administrative work on a number of Sims games, and this is the only role she's had that isn't listed as additional voices. Yeah. Oh, 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 don't... Hey! What is this? And it shows. Then there are some voice actors who probably should have just known better. Uriko's voice actress has had several roles in the past, but is quite famous, or infamous depending on how you look at it, for one in particular. It's Lynn Harris, and she voiced Rebecca Chambers in the original Resident Evil. My interpretation is off a little. Perhaps it's no coincidence then that Uriko's voice is as ear-splittingly annoying as it's ever been. Well, well, looks like we're here! Uranus is voiced by Donna Burke. She was Angela in Silent Hill 2 and Claudia in Silent Hill 3, and more recently, the iDroid voice in Metal Gear Solid 5. And of course, her character has zero cutscenes. Nagi is voiced by Erica Ash, whom, I'm not making this up, is a comedian, among other things, and would go on to become a cast member on Mad TV. You think I'll be flying all over the world talking like a bitch for this <laughs> You can kill that noise right now, cause I'm straight up gangster. <laughs> Fitting, I suppose, since a lot of Nagi's fight noises sound laughably out of place. Here I go. Ha! Ha! Yeah! Just for you! The last one I'll mention is Hugo's voice, Rob Narita, who has appeared in several Broadway and off-Broadway shows and on numerous television shows such as Grey's Anatomy, P.S. I Love You, and he even played Joel Dung Po on Max Headroom. Helen Zeno, I am Dung Po, a fellow controller of Theora's. But in this game, Yugo sounds like the dim-witted meathead he's perceived to be in some of the older Bloody War games. If that's the way you want it, that's the way you'll get it! Eh? Yeah? I, I feel something from you. What's in here, old man? And Stun is voiced by a guy named Ward E. Sexton. If that name doesn't ring a bell, his voice probably will, because he did this. Resident Evil 4 Going over the history of the rest of the voice cast is like reading a top 10 list for crappy voice acting in video games. Aside from Resident Evil Dead Aim, there's Resident Evil Survivor, the PlayStation Clock Tower game, Trag, F-Zero GX, and God help us all, Michigan Report from Hell. Which, come to think of it, Lynn Harris voiced in and directed that game. Compare this to the Japanese voice cast, which, with a few exceptions, consists of people experienced with voiceover in games or animation, several of whom voiced in fighting games before. For example, Reiji was voiced by Masakazu Suzuki, who also voiced Yang in a few Street Fighter titles prior to this. Bakaru's voice is Akira Ishida, aka Zealous, from several Slayer series. Toru Okawa voiced Stun. He also voiced Joseph Joestar in the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Arcade Fighter and Ryu in Street Fighter III Third Strike. Uranus is voiced by Eriko Fujimaki, 
who also voiced Uranus in Bloody Roar 3. Oh my god, a returning voice actress. Just listen to this cutscene with Sheena and tell me if you can pin down where you might have heard a voice like this before. Sheena was voiced by Atsuko Tanaka, now known for her work voicing Matoko Kusanagi in the Ghost in the Shell series, and after this game, the Amazon in Dragon's Crown, and Bayonetta in the Bayonetta series, among many, many other roles. But do I blame the voice cast for how bad the performances are, or is this a Metroid Other M situation where it's actually the director that is largely responsible? In this case, as he's called the director of narration recording, is Tomoyuki Hamada. Prior to this, he was a composer and arranger of music going back to the mid-90s, namely on the Sentimental Graffiti Dating Sim series. Wait a minute, so they hired musicians and composers to direct and perform the voiceovers, but they hired an arranger to compose the music. Great. That's, that's just great. What's really annoying about these cutscenes is that several of them have the same lines recycled across multiple scenes. And rather than re-record them or, you know, fix the translation issues, they just copy-pasted one recording across every single scene. What? Is this energy Gaia? What? Is this energy Gaia? Well then. Show me your true self. Well then. Show me your true self. On a similar note, because of the way arcade mode is laid out, every single character has to talk to Ryoho and Mana at the end. Mana does most of the talking, which is unfortunate because she's a worse actor than Ryoho. But what also sucks is that uh, most of the characters have the same dialogue spiel from Mana at the end. And not just the same dialogue, the same camera angles, the same animations, everything. And to prove my point, here are clips from several different characters' endings all overlaid on top of each other. Oh, Alright. I've stalled long enough. It's time to show and explain what goes on in these cutscenes. <laughs> Gato finds an apparently mute Sheena and beats the shit out of her. And leaves. Then he somehow ends up at a temple where Yoho and Mana are waiting. Relax, relax. They're in a coma, but I'm protecting them. What? Who? Who's in a coma? One very strong girl went down a good path. But she almost went out of control. Strong girl? You mean Sheena? She didn't seem that out of control when we saw her standing perfectly still, or even afterwards when she was just doubled over from getting beat up by a six and a half foot tall ripped French guy. She did fight Gatto, but they've had a family rivalry of sorts since Bloody War 2, so it's not weird to see these two fight each other. Then Ryoho says there's no time to explain, even though there clearly is, and fights you. This happens every time you encounter them, and it acts as a precursor to the final battle. So you beat up Ryoho, and Mana either breaks the seal on him, because apparently he thinks will be fine, or it comes off on its own. It changes depending on who you're playing as. Wait, didn't the backstory say he didn't know about the seal on him? What? The power's increasing? What in the world? Then comes the same scene that appears in almost every character's arcade run where Ryoho turns into the final boss. I can't possibly take any of that seriously. I'm just imagining how Ryoho's voice actor had to contort his face in order to sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger falling out of an airplane. And 
welcome to the final boss of every character in arcade mode. Except for Dragon Ryoho, who fights Gato in the final stage for no apparent reason. This could be a challenging fight, except there's a really easy way to beat him. Back up as far as possible and go into beast form. Being far away from the dragon puts him into his running animation, which is a flying animation which he doesn't cancel out of. In this time, you can run under him to the other side of the arena. You might wonder why I'd suggest not fighting the boss, and it's because look at his health bar. Or rather his beast gauge since he doesn't have a health bar. Staying far away lures him into using his beast drives, which can be blocked. One takes off a quarter of his beast gauge and the other empties it completely, at which point you can just hit Ryoho with one attack and win. Even if it doesn't completely drain his health, the time's up tiebreaker of having more health than the opponent also works. That's right, you can win this without attacking at all. And just to drive home that attempting to fight the final boss is the worst thing you can do, losing this fight, unlike every other fight in arcade mode, is a game over. No continues, no nothing. You have to start all over again. Anyway, you beat the dragon, Gato calls Ryoho's dragon form unbelievable, and Mana explains everything in a long-winded exposition dump. Ryoho is an ancient magical beast with incredible power. He's a dragon vessel. And the dragon's power is so immense, and his existence so dangerous, that Then why would Gaia bring out the dragon in the first place? Wait, wait, stop, stop. Guys, you're panning the camera too far. To reseal the broken seal, it was necessary to remove it completely first. That's why I needed the strength of strong zoanthropes such as you. Then why not just find a group of strong zoanthropes in a back alley somewhere and let them beat the shit out of Ryoho and his dragon form instead of luring one possibly to his or her death? And of course, Gato is perfectly fine with this. I feel the same energy from you as the girl who went out of control. Is she your... Eh? Oh, that's my daughter. Well, there's no blood connection, but I... Is it sad that this is the most their relationship has been discussed since Bloody Roar 2? It left an intense fire when it swooped down earlier. What? What the hell are you talking about? What? Don't worry about it. She shouldn't have lost consciousness from just that. Oh good, apparently what sounds like Sheena getting bombs dropped on her head isn't even enough to knock her out. <laughs> ah, you love your daughter as well. Well, I can't say it directly to her. And fade to black in credits along with stills of the cutscenes that we just saw. Unless you're playing as Dragon Ryoho, Koryu, or Uranus, in which case there are no stills to show. You know what? This ending could have been okay if, you know, the dialogue wasn't mangled by the translation and the acting. And, you know, if Sheena's ending brought up anything we just saw. <laughs> nope. You might not even fight Gato at all in Sheena's arcade run. Ah! God, Jesus! This isn't... poison! I think she feels the power of the dragon radiating from Ryoho like a Dragon Ball Z character. But that's just a guess because I have no idea what's going on. Didn't an investigative team come here? Oh, the people Sheena was looking for are in a coma. Then why did that come up in Gato's cutscenes? Meanwhile, Sheena reacts to Ryoho's challenge about the way you'd expect. Hey! What is this? One fight later, Mana breaks the seal and... Ah! Uh, I can feel the pressure building! What are you? Apparently it gets really windy when the seal gets broken. But only when Sheena is standing near it. And one timeout victory later... What exactly were you guys planning here? How could we plan this? Oh, wait! I'm sorry about before. Oh, hey, it's the same monologue we heard earlier. Let's just fast forward a bit. Apparently the dragon's power somehow caused the investigative team to go into comas. And if it did that to them, how come it hasn't happened to anybody else? I understand most of it now. That makes one of us, Sheena. I've got to make contact soon or this place is going to get bombed! What?! Why would they send Sheena and an investigative team to this place and then bomb it before they have a chance to get out of there? But what should I tell them? I can't possibly tell them a dragon is here. Tell them there are innocent civilians in the area, and the investigative team. 
Tell them not to bomb a place they didn't even bother determining whether or not it was a threat. Tell them anything! Two characters. I'm like two characters in and I already feel like quitting. Bakuru finds Koryu at some point, and I have no idea what Koryu is talking about. It's probably trying to play up an old Bakuru versus new Bakuru angle, but nothing he said ties into that. It's just my opinion, but if you can't defeat that technique, you need to restart your training. He's a robot. Restarting his training would consist of reformatting his brain and installing ninjutsu.exe like he just fell out of the Matrix. The power of the changing will only increase. Can you control it until the end? I'm just going to assume that he's talking about zoanthropes going out of control and rioting. But I want you to note that after this fight, Bakuru looks fine. But in the very next cutscene, he's stumbling around grabbing his arm like he's injured. Yeah, great job, Mana. You got the guy who's supposed to help reseal the dragon injured by apparently leading him into Koryu. Somehow Bakuru nails down this place as the cause of the earthquakes and riots. Then Ryoho challenges him. Huh? You... you wanna fight? One fight and Dragon Ryoho killing his self with beast drives later, and we can skip over the monologue. So that's why it's been getting easier for us Zoranthropes to become violent. How? How does the zeal coming loose cause Zoanthropes to go out in the street and start punching the nearest person? And why do I even bother asking this, knowing that it will never get adequately explained? Is he okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's okay. Just sleeping, I think. Silly Bakuru, don't you remember? Getting hit while in beast form doesn't affect your regular health at all. And Bakuru runs off, leaving behind some souvenir firewood. And that's how a lot of these endings go. Mana vomits exposition, the other character says, oh, okay, and walks off. So for a change of pace, let's check Busuzima's ending. Hi! I immediately regret this decision. Aside from apparently getting kicked in the nuts several times, judging by his voice, Busuzima tracks the fox he was following to Ryoho, who is understandably pissed about what Busuzima is doing. No mercy for you! No, stop, I'm so scared! What am I saying? Why does Busuzima suddenly have a British accent? He's Japanese. Little fox, this old man's going to take you to a good place, okay? Dear viewers, please use this time to do anything that will help you forget what you just saw. I'd promise it won't happen again, but I'd probably be lying. So that happens, then the seal comes off of Ryoho all by itself, one gauge draining beast drive later, and... It's all over for the dragon! I'm gonna take this guy home and study him! With just one more hit! Dumbass, you already knocked him out! What do you mean, one more hit? He realizes almost immediately that Mana resealed the dragon, and he can't actually study Ryoho. So then he turns his attention back to Mana. I present to you the rest of this ending without any commentary. Wait! Wait! Oh, you little fox! No! Yeah! Even in beast form, why would you bite Busuzima in the ass? You have no idea where that's been! Stun just wanders into the temple and asks Ryoho and Mana if they can seal beast power, and Ryoho responds by threatening to murder him. Yeah, real threatening, Ryoho. I'd be more intimidated if I didn't just sidestep you to death. It's around this point that Ryoho realizes Stun isn't hiding his face, to which Mana adds, A man mad zoanthrope! What? What? Man mad. Not only did the typo get into the game, the voice actress read the typo! Apparently not questioning what the hell man mad is supposed to mean. Hudson, translate the I can't even pretend to give a shit at this point. Then the seal comes loose, the dragon screws itself, and... It looks like I've been rescued by this vile body again. Yeah, rescued from getting your ass kicked so you can continue to live in constant pain. Mana explains that she can't seal Stun's beast power because Ryoho isn't exactly a zoanthrope, and her abilities are designed to work only on the dragon. Stun's reaction is surprisingly calm, considering that in Bloody War 3, he was almost driven to insanity and his body was on the verge of breaking down entirely. 
and in Extreme, his body did break down and he had to be pieced back together Humpty Dumpty style by scientists. I guess he's on a heavy diet of duct tape and painkillers to keep himself together for this game. So Ryoho wakes up and Stun leaves to continue his miserable existence. Meanwhile, in a different continuity, Mana senses that someone is nearby, and after a threat from Ryoho, Jenny descends from the heavens. Oh! Lady, why are you here? Ah! Old? Lady? I'm not that old! Mana never said you were old. Is this another botched reading? It appears that the nine-tailed fox was here with the water god. Water god? Are you talking about the dragon that hasn't shown up at all yet? You're another fool who has come to steal the power of Nine Tails. I'm Nine Tails. And Jenny instantly believes this despite knowing it was just a folk story. Ryoho's seal comes loose, the dragon empties its own beast gauge, and... Hard to believe that both a water god and a dragon existed here. Wait, they're two different things? I thought they were the same thing, like the various dragons in Japanese mythology that rule the sea. And what are you supposed to be? You already know! She's a one-tailed fox! After Mana's monologue, she asks Jenny not to mention the dragon to anyone. Now that the truth has come out, I have to report this, of course! I have a rock from the mountain temple that was protected by a strange parent and his child. I investigated it urgently, and, well, that's about all there was. Thank you! Ah, uh, Jenny! How does she know Jenny's name? Well, no time for that, because in an alternate universe, Mana just led Long to Ryoho, and here Ryoho is fully aware of the seal placed on him. In so many words, she tells Long to beat up Ryoho, and he agrees to do it, and this is not how you spell it! God damn! Damn it! even in 2003 people couldn't get this shit right. Why is Mana helping Ryoho in this fight when she wants Long to kick his ass so she can redo the seal? Ah, oh, whatever. One suicidal dragon later... It's been a long time since I've been that scared. If the seal looks like it will break again, call me. And he can be reached at... Oh right, he's a hermit and is really hard to get in touch with. I'm concerned about the other zoanthropes and dragons. Hold on, what other dragons? Where the hell is Long going? He's going to walk off the side of the stage! Shenlong arrives at the temple and is immediately confronted by Ryoho and Mana. Eh? Who are you? Oh yeah? Did Shenlong just have a mood swing in the middle of that scene? Eh? Who are you? Oh yeah? Apparently Mana asks Shenlong to come and help with Ryoho. And I'm talking about the resealing and not the clipping issue he's having with the back of his neck. And in this continuity, Ryoho doesn't know about the seal on him. Shenlong beats him up, assuming Ryoho is another zoanthrope attacking him like the fortune teller said, and apparently thinks the fortune teller tricked him into coming out here for nothing. That fortune teller! How could he trick me? Me! 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 When I find him! Seal breaks, dragon appears, run around, wait for it to beat itself, and oh hey, Ryoho's laying on nothing! Then this happens. Thanks to you, the dragon has been resealed! Hello? Is that a Japanese thing? Greeting someone after beating up their friends? Because I haven't learned anything like that yet. So, as a result of that power, everyone except great zoanthropes like me became violent? Okay, I've gotta ask. Of all the zoanthropes out there, not only does the guy who starts every fight by saying, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. not succumb to his seemingly ever-present violent tendencies, but Mana sees this guy and thinks, yeah, I'll have him beat Ryoho to within an inch of his life so I can fix the seal. And about the fortune teller? How does she know about that? Or did that happen off screen too? He was trying to get me to come here. The fortune teller just said get purified at a temple, Shenlong, not this specific one. Do you have any idea how many temples are in Japan? There had to be one nearby which you didn't need to beat up eight random people to get to. That was so you would deal with the people who were out of control. Maintaining the seal required all of my strength. Mana flat out admits to manipulating Shenlong into literally fighting her battles for her, and he takes it shockingly well. Ah, so it was to prevent the surrounding areas from being damaged. 
prevent it from... Look around you, Shenlong! The temple is a mess! And the only reason the other areas weren't damaged is because everything had a goddamn force field around it. You might suggest that because the force fields have the same symbol appear on them that Mana uses, that she was the one using the force fields to protect the surrounding areas. And I might suggest that she just said she was using all of her strength to keep the seal intact. So no, still no explanation for that. And he just walks off. The one thing he does in this entire scene that sounds vaguely like something Shenlong would say is that he's going to go home and drink. Which, believe me, if I drank, I'd have been half in the bag five minutes into this video. Let's get to one of the new characters for a change of pace. Reiji arrives at the temple where he can sense the dragon's presence. Again with the wrong it's! God, my English degree is howling in rage right now. You defeated the Unborn, so that thing has begun its long sleep again. The Unborn? You mean Xeon? I fought him in the very first stage of arcade mode. No cutscenes, no build-up, he just appeared and I beat him. And keep in mind, outside of the characters attached to cutscenes, the opponents are random. You can reach this cutscene having never fought Xeon or Nagi, and this statement won't make any sense. Anyway, Reiji knows Mana is full of shit because in Bloody War 4, apparently damn near everyone can just sense that it's nearby. Well, why don't you try me again, little girl? What the hell does that mean? You know what, I don't want to know. Just send in the dragon so I can watch it beat itself and wonder what I'm doing with my life. A dragon and the unborn? I would have expected more. Stop. First off, why is Ryoho in dragon form? We just knocked him out of dragon form! Second, why did Reiji bring up the Unborn? Even if you do fight Xeon or Nagi, or both of them in arcade mode, it makes no sense for him to just blurt out the Unborn after this fight. So my entire life has been controlled for this? Controlled for what? Even if we assume Reiji's clan was somehow tied to this temple, and Ryoho specifically, can we really assume that they're protecting the dragon or even helping keep it sealed? Because if that was the case, why wouldn't Ryoho and Mana seek them out first to help with the seal? Oh, and Ryoho's dead apparently, which means... I don't know. The earthquake seemed to stop, and by all accounts Reiji was violent before the riot started, and the world isn't in ruin or anything. Are we sure this isn't a good ending? I'm just a beginner! I don't have my certification yet in Dragon CPR! Loud mouthed! Reiji is confronted by three other crow people, presumably from the Yaragarasu, and Reiji decides to cowboy up and try to kill them as well. And scene. Well, given this much, Reiji is a consistent character. Granted, it's because he's completely one-dimensional, but damn it, he's consistent! Alice gets confronted by Ryoho and Mana right at the start, instead of at the end of arcade mode. Hey, you! What do you think you're doing? You'd better start explaining! Is this how she always reacts to getting jumped in a back alley by priests? Ryoho's seal threatens to come undone, but he manages to hold it back. Mana tells Alice she wants her to beat up someone at the temple written on... something we can't see. It's related to the incident that you're investigating. She wasn't investigating. She was treating victims of the earthquakes. I don't understand at all! Can't help you, Alice. I barely get it myself. And then they just vanish. How? They don't have any kind of teleportation moves like Koryu or Bakaru, so how did they do that? And I guess the location of the temple is on that random scrap of paper we see floating around, even though we never saw Mana or Ryoho with it, and this is a back alley, so it could just be an old dirty newspaper. So Alice, despite knowing where the temple is now, still goes through an unrelated temple, the rooftop, the prison, the freezing space... What kind of ass-backward path are you taking to this temple, Alice? She does eventually get to the temple, and Ryoho immediately tells Mana to break the seal. Yes! <laughs> Wait, he was just standing less than a second ago. Why is he on the ground doubled over before Mana even breaks the seal? It's like they're reusing motion captures between characters or something. I know it's sudden, but... please! Whatever, I didn't even need to go into beast form to beat the dragon this time. That's more so a just-in-case thing I do out of habit. Ooh, scared me. <laughs> Alice reacts to a dragon the same way she reacts to someone jumping out at her and saying, Boo! What in the world do you have me fighting a... What in... Wow, damn, Alice can't even have a complete thought after that strenuous one-sided 14-second fight. After Mana's monologue... 
It was the after effects of that strength that caused the problems with the zoanthropes. Why can't most of the zoanthropes in this game pronounce the word zoanthrope? This will stop the violence and the earthquakes. Ah, yes! And again, Alice gets cut off. And again, how is this going to stop the violence? You think everyone's just going to forgive and or forget that a bunch of zoanthropes went crazy and attacked everyone and anything within arm's reach? It must be difficult for two people living in this kind of place. Well, it is now, since breaking the seal kind of destroyed everything. Now that I know what kind of dangerous being exists in this area, and since this is under WOC jurisdiction... Since when? Alice is only a volunteer with the WOC. She has no authority to do that. And if it was under WOC jurisdiction, how come neither Yugo, the guy in charge of it, nor Bakuru, the guy working right under Yugo, mentioned anything about this? Would you like me to bring you some cake next time? This is somehow more anime than the anime cutscenes from the last game. Speaking of, here's a Hey, we actually see Mana leading someone to the shrine instead of just having them show up. So you finally come back. What the... Did Oriko's next line start playing before it was supposed to? Ah! Yes. Yes, it did. Mana. Mana, is this girl okay? Meow, 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 meow! Let me translate for you, Ryoho. She meow, meow, meow stands for... No, she's not okay for this. You know, as much as I hate most of the new characters, Uriko is my least favorite character in this game. Somehow she's managed to become even dumber, to the point that I wonder how she manages to dress herself without at least two people helping her. And of course, Ryoho attacks, to which she responds... Wait! Look, bud! Wow! Aside from the subtitle being completely wrong, Pakupon is the name she gave to Mana while she was in beast form. It's a dog's name, whatever. Mana! Break the seal! Yes! Wait! Don't just leave me here! Oh! What the hell are you talking about? No one's le- Fuck it, skip ahead. I don't understand any of this! What's going on? Pakupon can become a girl, and the priest can become a dragon! You'd think the Zoanthrope wouldn't be that surprised to see, you know, Zoanthropes. You came all the way here, in your beast form. Best form? Best form? I apologize if it seems like I'm being picky, but this isn't a massive, lengthy, dialogue-heavy game where a typo here and there can be forgiven. It's a fighting game! The dialogue for the whole game could fit in a children's book, and there are mistakes everywhere. I don't know how I managed to get this far without knowing that! Except knowing that would have no bearing on your winning any of the previous fights. I guess the only thing I regret is that I can't keep Bakubou! This will apply again about 10 seconds from now, but what is Uriko doing? Oh no! It's almost dinner time! Well, I'm going home now. Mana, can I come and play with you sometime? Uriko, do you talk to anyone around your age except Kenji? Ah! Just one more thing, Pakapo is a fox! <gasps> what?! How is that a stunning revelation? And actually, better question. How is this dumbass still smart enough to remember to breathe? Oh, and good luck not hearing this in your nightmares. <laughs> Yugo is in a back alley for some reason, and he runs into Reiji. You're supposed to be strong! Oh, that's right. You're famous. But now, you're in my way! As it turns out, Reiji is the Black Shadow he was looking for. Then what is... Nagi? One loading screen later, he finds Nagi on a casual stroll, apparently into the side of that barrier. Eh? I, I feel something from you. Someone get this man an Academy Award, now! So much like Sheena, we're supposed to infer Nagi's an out-of-control zoanthrope from that cutscene where she was just standing around and not talking. By Blood War 4's definition, these guys are out of control. And then he just leaves her without a word so we can fight Xian at the aquarium. Xian? No. The unborn? Was that a question? 
Because you know he's the unborn. You've known that since Bloody War 3. What did you do to Nagi? Again, you already know about Xion almost killing her. And her being aggressive isn't because of the unborn, but because the dragon seal on Ryoho is weakening. Now, are you going to explain how exactly you know Nagi, or you're not? Eh, okay. And once again, we get nothing after this fight. Why'd they have a cutscene afterward for Reiji, but not for either of these two since they're apparently a lot closer to Yugo from a plot standpoint? Whatever, on to the shrine which Yugo went to because... Uh... I've got something I want to ask you, old man. This particular line reminds me of what happens when I record narration, forget something I wanted to say, record it later, and then try and plug it back in in the middle of a sentence and hope nobody notices. I've got something I want to ask you, old man. What's the connection with the unborn? Connection to what? The riots and earthquakes? What makes you think they'd know that? So Mono lets slip that they do know something, and Ryoho tells Yugo to mind his own damn business. One ass kicking later... Hey! Old man! Why don't you teach me? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Seal breaks, dragon comes out, beast drives, no health, you get it by now. And again Ryoho's in dragon form despite being knocked out of it moments ago. It's exactly as you said. The zoanthrope violence and the earthquakes were because the dragon's power was too strong. Hold on, when did Yugo ever say that? All he did was ask about the unborn, which, by the way, plays no role in this ending. What's the connection with the unborn? Oh, hi, copy-pasted dialogue. What's the connection with the unborn? The dragon was made by the life force of this planet itself. Whoa, Bata just disappeared! I guess that is one of her abilities after all. Wrong it's again! And ride! Ride the planet of useless life. Did nobody with a firm grasp of English proofread this? Its purpose was to rid this planet of useless life and life that damaged the planet. So according to Mana and this picture, dinosaurs were either useless or threatening the planet, and so the Earth sent a dragon to murder all of them. And how did it do that if the dragon needs a vessel? Humans and dinosaurs didn't exist at the same time, so did one lucky dinosaur win the Gaia Lottery and become a dragon vessel, killing all the other dinosaurs and then just dying alone? The Unborn was held back by the dragon a long time ago, right? One, how does Yugo know that? And two, that's not possible because the Unborn's power was sealed by the tabula, as was said in 3, in times now forgotten. Unless you're saying Gaia made the tabula, in which case I'd ask, why bother making the dragon? And you know what? By Mana's own account, the dragon is causing a bunch of problems and damaging the planet and the people on it, so why doesn't Gaia send something to kill the dragon? I'm pretty sure I've brought this up before, but holy shit, Gaia is stupid! But why is Nagi loyal to the unborn? That girl, Nagi, her power was given to her just so she could defeat the unborn that had been brought back to life a year ago. No, the Unborn was never killed, just sealed by the tabula, because remember, the Unborn is not just one guy. It's several beings with a collective conscious, sort of like a legion for we are many type of being. And we never found out Xeon's origin, so we don't know how long he's had an Unborn form. The power was a copy of the Unborn's power, but some of its spirit was also copied. I see. Her body was taken over. Bull. Shit. We'll see it later, but the Unborn doesn't and can't control Nagi except under very specific circumstances. Which don't happen in Yugo's playthrough. Yugo goes on about how good he was to beat a dragon, but Mana says the seal- What? It wasn't completely broken? He turned into a goddamn dragon! What, would having the seal completely break make it not lose health every time it did a beast drive? Yugo teases Mana about wanting to fight a full-strength dragon when Ryoho wakes up. <sighs> or he just goes, fa. Either way, that's the end. As for Nagi, she finds Jian on a rooftop, and he doesn't recognize her. She jogs his memory, and he says he didn't think she was a zoanthrope, which, technically, he's right. Thanks to you, after that, I morphed from my original body! What? Is this energy Gaia? So you kick his ass, and... Are you kidding me with this victory pose? Just slap a Brazzers logo on it and call it a day. Xeon realizes Gaia copied his powers to try and get back at him, 
and Nagi tells him to return her to her original body. So, Nagi's not in her original body? I guess that explains why we don't see a stab wound from Xeon, but whose body is that? And if she's in a different body, how the hell does Yugo recognize her? Xeon calls her on her stupidity while mocking her with his nonsensical mouth movements. <laughs> you don't seem to get it. He starts to laugh and calls out Gaia for putting a part of the unborn in Nagi to make her the spurious form. Okay, I'll bite. If Gaia is powerful enough to create the unborn, does that mean that Gaia, you know, created the unborn? Was it another thing Gaia made to destroy useless or dangerous life ages ago, which, like the dragon now, horrifically backfired on her? And isn't fighting the hive mind that is the unborn with the unborn kind of like trying to put out a fire by throwing napalm on it? Anyway, Xeon spazzes around a bit while rambling about how she's just a copy and he's the real deal, which Nagi responds to calmly and rationally by stabbing him to death. And since Xeon was under the possession of the unborn, it moves to the next best host, which is... Nagi. By the way, quick question. If Xeon's not under the influence of the unborn, does he still have the unborn beast form? I mean... He had a crest in three, so he is a zoanthrope, but if he's not influenced by... Wow, this game's dumb. I don't want to try rationalizing this shit anymore, let's just move on. She ends up at the temple where Mana immediately points out that Nagi's being controlled by the Unborn, which manifests as a black fart cloud around her. How come it never did that with Xeon? You! Bring out the one who's caused us so much... Uh, Nagi, you gonna finish that thought? Grief! There you go. Hey, check out what you can do with one of Nagi's beast drives after knocking out an opponent. <laughs> this will be exciting. <laughs> oh god, how inappropriate could that be? She threatens Mana to reveal where the dragon is, but Ryoho's seal comes loose, and you know where this is going. Nagi, or rather the unborn controlling her, claims they'll have revenge with this one's strike, but right as she's about to stab Ryoho... Nagi! <laughs> this scene is amazing! Uh, it's not just because Yugo's voice gets cut off almost immediately, but because Yugo's like an in-game representation of my feelings toward this character. Coming out of nowhere and clocking Nagi right in the jaw. What? 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 Yeah, this shit is the unborn, everyone. A black cloud with a generic Halloween spooky face on it. You know what this is? This is someone taking the first generation ghost type Pokemon, mashing them all together, and calling it the Unborn. Mana freezes it in place because she can do that, I guess, and Nagi slashes at it, which somehow causes it to disappear, and she collapses. She wakes up with Yugo saying something that wasn't translated properly, and fuck this game. Nagi doesn't remember anything after fighting Xeon, and Yugo says something rather ironic. Um, well, I'm not very good at talking. At which point Mana takes over and delivers a completely different spiel than almost everyone else and contradicts what exactly the dragon does. This dragon, whose purpose is to protect this world from evil beings, was the cause of all this, but... We just went through a dozen cutscenes where you told us that the dragon was around to play natural selection with useless and earth-endangering life. But now, it's just the evil things it worries about. And it doesn't kill them, it just protects the world from them. I would tell Mana to kiss my ass, except, as we've already seen, she's a biter. Yeah! Mana says Nagi defeated the Unborn, which isn't true because there's still the tabula floating around somewhere, but Nagi can't go back to her original body, which I guess makes her the poor man's zoanthrope version of Psylocke. Also, take a listen to this. Thanks to you, the Unborn has been defeated. And the dragon has been sealed again. 
This cutscene is so goddamn long that the music fades out and the rest of it is just background noise. And she takes this news shockingly well considering that was the whole reason she tracked down Xion in the first place. Axapet! Axapet! That's not even a word! Nagi toys with Yugo after remembering he punched her in the face, even though she was still being controlled at that point. And get ready for some of the worst fake snoring you've ever heard. And everyone laughs the end. As for Xeon, Nagi confronts him on the rooftops and, like before, he ignores her until she goes into beast form. A little pissed off that an imitation was sent after him, he fights Nagi, wins, and grinds his boot into Nagi's forehead for good measure. He lets her live and when Nagi asks why, he just says, Good question. Why, indeed. Which is supposed to be foreshadowing, but by this point I just thought he was acting out of character, like most other established characters in this game. He gets to the shrine and Mana tries the old it's not here trick again, and it works about as well as it did last time. <laughs> I know I mentioned the lip flaps are off because of the language switch, but this looks bad no matter what language it's in. He's laughing the same way a ventriloquist dummy would. I feel Gaia's unlucky energy coming from you. Well then. Show me your true self! <laughs> yep, Xeon can disrupt the seal on Ryoho because... he just can. Don't fool with me, kid! Ah, oh, you! I'm fine just as you are now! The fuck are you talking about? Whatever, she's getting what's coming to her in the next cutscene when the seal breaks loose. <laughs> Bloody Roar 4. It's one of those few instances where you can say, I'm glad that nine-year-old girl got punched across the room and not feel like an asshole about it. For those of us who suffer eternally, I will bring the light here and now! Not sure what that means since the Unborn is typically about darkness, not light, but either way the dragon is still its own worst enemy. Somehow Ryoho's conscious and in dragon form still, and Xeon's dramatics get cut off by the weird pacing of the dialogue. With this, we finally get a blow in on Gaia, who is... Long took advantage of us. Mana comes too as Xeon's about to deliver the final blow and locks him in place. How do you like it? You can't get free, right? Why are her eyes not looking at Xeon or Ryoho? It turns out Xeon doesn't have to get free, because Nagi, under the influence of the Unborn somehow, I say somehow because before Xeon had to die and have his black fart cloud possess Nagi for her to be under its influence, stabs Dragon Ryoho through the neck and kills him. Mana just lets Xeon go before going into fox form and barking, which somehow releases the Unborn from both Xeon and Nagi. If Mana could do this the entire time, why the fuck didn't she do it the moment Xeon walked into the shrine? Xeon, who's still in his unborn beast form without the unborn's influence, and the same can be said for Nagi as well, both turn on the unborn and destroy it in one shot. Getting rid of the unborn in Bloody Roar 4 takes roughly the same amount of effort as swatting a mosquito. Meanwhile, Mana mourns the loss of Ryoho and fade to black. And I think this goes without saying at this point, but I'd much rather have this fox than this fox. And now, finally... Let's see how Ryoho and Mana deal with... Ryoho and Mana. While apparently just wandering around Japan, they come across Reiji. You're like my old man. You won't die. Except your dad did die. You killed him and ran out on the clan, remember? Ryoho is apparently after the Black Shadow because he mentions that it wasn't the white zoanthrope behind it. Whatever it is. Also, Mana is nowhere to be seen in this cutscene. Not that I'm complaining, but where did she go? They end up at another temple and find Zhu. Why is he in his palette swap costume? Most of this is a copy-paste of Xion's first cutscene with Ryoho and Mana. So he tries breaking the seal, Ryogo shrugs it off, they kick his ass, and Xion does this. I may have sped up the footage a bit, but how could I not? He's not dead, but Mana says the evil in him is dissipated, even though we never saw the Unborn leave his body like every other time. 
But they're not done yet because they have to face the Worshipper of Nine Tails. And if it's not the dragon, then we never see the Worshipper of Nine Tails. Also, Xion's apparently gone despite him being unconscious on the floor next to them ten seconds ago. They get back to the shrine, which Ryoho apparently doesn't recognize based on his reaction. Is this the place? And Mana thinks because they beat the Unborn, whom the dragon was designed to fight aside from, you know, everything else it was made for, and Mana thinks they're in the clear only for the seal on Ryoho to start coming loose again. Ryoho, no! Don't give him your body! Give who his body? The dragon or the Unborn? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, it's the dragon. Here it comes. This is what pissed me off the most about Ryoho and Mana. As he becomes a dragon, Ryoho ends up facing the dragon in his mind. Mana explains the dragon was kept inside him as a last resort, and she'll help him in this fight, just like every other fight to this point. I don't understand. The feeling is mutual, Ryoho. It's the same fight as always, just with a different arena, so same strategy applies. Ryoho comes to in human form, and Mana tells him the dragon's been resealed. Yup! Ryoho and Mana just resealed the dragon all by themselves. Yes, yes, that really added something to the story, didn't it? <laughs> so let me just remind you of what this ter ter terribly complicated story was all about. That long-winded speech Mana kept giving in the other endings about needing a strong zoanthrope to help with the resealing process? That was a load of shit! But every character in the game still needed to focus on these two in the last couple of fights and in the endings because I'm important. Just think for a moment what the cutscenes could have been like if not everything was focused on these two assholes. It would still suck because of the script translation and the acting, but we might see characters that love or hate each other interacting more than the meaningless one-offs with Gato and Shino or Koryu and Bakudu. Mana goes on to say that the dragon awoke in Ryoho a year ago when the temple was attacked. So not only does Ryoho know this temple, despite acting like he didn't recognize it earlier, and don't give me the memory loss excuse because he clearly knew this place in every other ending, but the dragon was inside of him since before that attack. And when the guardians were keeping the dragon down... Stop! See that bird guy? I was right. The Yadagarasu did help with the dragon seal, and Mana is a little shit for not asking them for help instead of plucking strangers off the street. Mana explains her sister had to try sealing the dragon because she wasn't strong enough at the time. Ryoho is understandably a bit confused and was the connection- I don't care anymore, we're almost done. The dragon was made by the life force of this planet itself. Oh fucking hell, it's the same speech as before! No, we're skipping this shit! Mana questions why the Unborn disappearing didn't calm down the dragon, to which I would point out that that's not the only function of the dragon according to, you know, Mana. And Ryoho chimes in right away. The ones that will destroy the planet are probably we humans. And that's it. The dragon exists because humans will threaten the planet. Not zoanthropes, mind you. Humans. Sell off your fossil fuel cars, start shopping at Whole Foods, and hug some trees, folks, or the planet will send a dragon to murder your ungrateful ass. Oh my god. We did it. We're done! I don't have to play this game anymore! So, we already know that critically the game got mostly mixed reviews at best. But how did Bloody War 4 end up doing commercially? Not good. To give you an idea of how bad it did, here are the rough global sales figures for every Bloody Roar game prior to this. Do you have a rough guesstimate of how it did in your head yet? Bloody Roar 4 sold about... 90,000 units worldwide. Impressively bad, considering it's on the series' quote-unquote home console, and that's less than half of what the non-PS2 Extreme did. In a cruel twist of fate, though, because the game sold so poorly, it's become slightly rare. It's hard to find anyone selling a complete copy of the game for less than $20 to $25. As for Hudson, in 2005, Konami became their parent company, in addition to their majority shareholder. They continued onward and upward with such future titles as the Mario Party series, a crappy Wii Sports knockoff called DECA Sports, which also got a crappy Kinect follow-up called DECA Sports Freedom. 
a crappy survival horror game revolving around cell phones named Calling, and the infamously bad Bomberman Act Zero. It wasn't all bad, though. I mean, they did put out Lost in Shadow, a puzzle platformer which was actually alright. By January of 2011, Konami fully acquired Hudson for the purpose of working on social and mobile games. The very next month, Hudson Entertainment, the US branch of Hudson, shut down. Former Hudson Entertainment brand manager and web producer, Morgan Harrow, would post a lengthy blog about the closure, during which he said the following. A special note goes to the fans demanding a return of the Bloody War series. It was something I personally pushed for in the company, despite the crowded fighting game market. With digital distribution channels like Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network, I felt there was a chance, if done right, to reinvigorate the series. There were some game design documents sent around internally of some spin-offs of the series, but it didn't seem like it was the right direction. There was a chance for something to happen late 2011, early 2012, but clearly, we won't see what was to be. To the Bloody War fans out there, I read every single one of your messages, petitions, and calls for the series to be brought back. You guys are awesome, and perhaps someday, a developer and a publisher will pick it up and do it justice. Until then, just know, you guys rock. And as a side note, Mr. Harrow is now a senior project manager for the Sony PlayStation web team. Good for him. In May of 2011, Hudson Soft executive and human turbo controller Takahashi Meijin, who was the basis for Master Higgins in Adventure Island, left the company without explanation. Perhaps he saw the writing on the wall, because less than a year later, Hudson Soft merged into Konami and ceased to exist on March 1, 2012. Hudson's branding still shows up beyond that, but it's all part of Konami Digital Entertainment, and as far as I know, they still hold the rights to Hudson's franchises, including Bloody Roar. As for Bloody Roar, the only thing beyond 4 worth mentioning is Yugo showing up in a not Smash Bros. title called Dreamix TV World Fighters. So if you ever wanted to see Yugo fight Optimus Prime and Simon Belmont, go ahead and import that. It briefly came back into the limelight when an imposter on Twitter posed as the account for Hudson Soft in 2011, and announced a new entry in the series was on the way. But that was four years ago, and it's been over a decade since the last Bloody War game. So where does the series step- That's it! I'm calling the cops after I give that guy a piece of my mind! Hey. I'm giving you 10 seconds to get... Huh? Whoa! I already told you, my neighbors a couple hours south of me have it. Do you really think I'm that stupid? Do I answer honestly? Did you think you were being clever? I can feel the tabula's presence in your home. Then why did it take you so long to knock a third time? Enough. Either surrender the tabula to me or die. Copying someone else's strengths in order to destroy me. You clearly put a lot of thought into that. <laughs> Thanks. What? Did you honestly think you knocked me out? You can't even make a fist for God's sake. Fool. 
I'll end your miserable life here and now! Crab it, drama queen. Come and get me. What? Enough of this! So, all of this is for the tabula, huh? You think you've won? This fight has barely begun. You won it? It's yours, my friend. Now get off my lawn. So as I was saying, where does the series stand now? A couple years ago, rumors circulated about Bloody Roar possibly being brought back as a PS4 exclusive title to compete with then Xbox One exclusive Killer Instinct. Of course, since then Street Fighter V became a PS4 console exclusive, so that idea is out the window. Still, the idea did catch on and lead to some interesting speculation among fans and observers. So, there was this recent, like, rumor drop that aiding was not available to help Capcom with the development of future fighting games or updates to Ultimate Marvel 3 or anything like that, because they're working on other projects. And the big cross-fingered hope is that that other freaking project is like Bloody Roar 5, is the eventual update to Bloody Roar that we've been waiting for for so freaking long. The fact that they registered a new domain for Bloody Roar shows some interesting possibilities and some interesting support for a new next generation title. There's someone from Hudson that works at Sony right now, and Hudson was the developers of what game? Bloody Four. I'm hyped right now so because of the possibility of this being a reality. Interest in the series persisted enough that the first two Bloody War games were released on the PlayStation Network. 
though those versions have a tendency to slow down, so you're better off getting a physical copy if you can. Just from my experience, there's an active fan group on DeviantArt called The Beast Legacy, and a Facebook group called Bloody War Columbia. In fact, Central and South American players have done a lot to keep Bloody War going, with tournaments for Bloody War games being held as recently as this year. As for what the future holds, who knows? It's easy to say the series is dead and buried, but we've seen other fighting games make comebacks. Mortal Kombat saw a resurgence with the 2011 reboot, it took 11 years to go from Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and Killer Instinct returned after a 17-year gap between KI Gold and the 2013 release. I do hope to see the day that I can add a Bloody War 5 or reboot or whatever to this video series. But until then... Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was... This hair, I just kind of put my hand, I just kind of put my hand up and I had no idea what your fix was. And, uh... Check, check. Uh, ooh! Uh, um... I didn't think you were going to do that way. Sorry, yeah. A friend of mine actually, like, purposely did, did a right hook on me in one of our shots. And he was like, oh, you can take it. So I was like, oh, okay, next shot, <laughs> bam. It's like, you can take it, right? But yeah. Ah. Okay. I'm ready to be able to make a fist again eventually. <laughs> Can't wait for the comments on this. There's no tap out victories in Bloody Roar. Yeah, I think you got her. Okay, she's coming back, good. Okay, are we recording? I think so. Okay. Dion finally has it now and doesn't know what to say. I waited so long. <laughs> you must give everything, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs>